Hey guys, today I'm going to share with you some of my favorite hacks for getting the most out of makeup that may not have worked out so well for you, whether it was too light, too dark, maybe you didn't like the certain texture of the product. And I use these all the time because as you probably know, I try a lot of makeup and very often the things that I purchase or that are sent to me in PR end up not working out in one way or another. But at the same time, I don't want the products to go to waste. I don't want to just throw things out. So I've had to learn to be more creative in the way that I use some of my products. So if that sounds interesting to you, then let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Okay, so let's get into the first set of hacks and these have to deal with foundations and concealers. And some of these might be more common sense to some of you, maybe you already do these and for others, you may not have even thought to do this, but I'm willing to bet that most of you probably will pick up at least one new trick in this video. So the first issue you may have is if you purchase foundation that's too dark for you. And there are a few things that you can do here. The first thing is to actually purchase a white mixer shades. So I know LA Girl makes one. There are probably some other brands as well. This is something that you can just keep at home and you can add some of the white drops to any foundation or concealer that you have just to help lighten them up a little bit. So that's one option. If you don't want to have to purchase a separate product to do that, you can always take one of your other foundations that's a lot lighter and try to mix that in and see if that helps. One thing I always like to do that's super easy is to just take a moisturizer and put a couple of drops of moisturizer into the foundation and the white color of the moisturizer will help to lighten up the product. The only thing to be aware of with this part though is that it is going to also change the texture of the foundation. It might make it a little bit more dewy or emollient and also it'll thin it out a little bit depending on how much you use and you might not get as much coverage out of your foundation. But those are just a few things that you could do to help lighten a foundation. If you bought one that is way too light for you, then you could mix in a darker foundation. If you have one that's maybe too dark, you could always add a little bit of that. You can also add in maybe some liquid bronzer or some cream bronzer and just kind of mix them together on the back of your hand. Or you could even add in bronzing powder, just scrape a little bit off add that to the formula. Really, it's all about just mixing and matching and kind of experimenting. And when you're doing things like this, you really can make a product very customized to exactly the shade that you want. If you have a foundation that is too warm and orangey looking for your skin tone, or maybe one that is too cool and pink toned, there are also mixers that you can purchase to deal with that. So these are also from LA Girl. The blue will help to cool down a foundation that is too warm or too orange and then the copper one can help to warm up a foundation that's a little bit too cool toned, maybe it's too gray or ashy. These mixing drops are very affordable and just having them in your stash can really help every time you buy a new product, you can just adjust it to suit your needs perfectly. Now, when it comes to a foundation or concealer being too dewy, you can easily just go ahead and set it down with a mattifying powder or a mattifying setting spray and really help to take that dewiness down. But what happens if your foundation that you buy is too drying on your skin and you just can't wear it because it's clinging to dry patches or it makes you look older than you are? My favorite thing to do, again, is just to experiment with different things that you can mix into the formula to help. Again, I love adding a moisturizer to a foundation. You can also add a couple of drops of facial oil 
oil to the foundation as well and that'll really help to give it even more moisture if i have a foundation that tends to settle into my pores or fine lines what i like to do is mix in a pore smoothing primer into the foundation and that'll really help to give it a super smooth feel that just glides and kind of goes right on top of the pores and fine lines rather than sinking in or if you just want a little bit more glow maybe the foundation looks too matte you can always add in a glowy primer like the elf halo glow or the l'oreal glotion that's another option that you can use as well these tips will also work if a foundation is maybe too much coverage or if it looks too makeupy on your skin you can just thin the product out a little bit again with an oil or a moisturizer and really help it to look a little bit more natural and sit in a more natural way on your skin next up when it comes to highlighters sometimes you buy a highlighter and it looks really beautiful and then you get it home and it's like wow this is way too intense for me it's really shiny it's highlighting my pores and it ends up just sitting in a drawer and you never touch it again so one of the things that i love to do and i actually have a youtube short about this so you may have seen that is to add a little bit of moisturizer so what you do is just pump a little bit of moisturizer on the back of your hand just the tiniest tiniest little bit you don't need a lot if you use too much it's not going to really work so a teeny drop of moisturizer then pick up some of the highlighter on your finger and just massage it into that little spot of moisturizer and it'll thin out the product it'll take down that shine and just turn it into a very subtle highlighter that just kind of gives that lit from within glow so it's more of a cream highlight versus a bolder powder and this really truly does work I do this all the time when it comes to blushes what if you buy a color that is too bright or maybe too dark like this cabana boy from the balm this one I love this color but every time I try to put it on my cheeks it's like major clown cheeks it's way way too intense so one of the things that you can do with this is to mix in some setting powder to make the color a little bit lighter so what I like to do is just shake out a little bit of powder and then take a spoolie brush and scrape off some of the blush into my hand as well mix the two together and you're left with the same color but just a lighter version of it and you can experiment with the lightness you can add more powder if you want to really lighten it up or just maybe add a little bit of powder so it's something that you can really customize and then what if you buy a blush that's too light that's just not even showing up on your skin at all you can take that and actually use it in place of the powder mix it into a darker blush and use that as a mixer for other blushes or another thing that I like to do with some of my really light blushes is if I'm wearing a cream blush I always love to seal my cream blushes with a powder on top because I feel like it really helps to set them and make them stay put longer so if you have a cream blush that's in kind of a similar shade as the one that's too light put the cream blush on then add the really light blush on top of it it's the same idea as using a setting powder on top of the cream blush but this actually has a little bit of color in it and it'll slightly intensify the color that's underneath whereas if you put a setting powder on top it might lighten the color of the blush a little bit so that's a little trick that I do with a lot of my blushes that are too light for me when it comes to lipsticks there are a few different issues that I may have the first one is them being too dry I have very dry lips so I definitely prefer a more balmy texture and sometimes like these Milani color fetish matte lipsticks these just felt so drying on my lips even if I applied a balm underneath I just wasn't crazy about them but because they have such a dry texture they make an amazing cream blush so you can just take the lipstick and swipe it right onto your cheeks or you can pick it up with a brush directly from the tube and just use it as a cream blush and more often than not these more mattifying formulas are so long lasting and they will really stay put on your cheeks all day you can do the same thing if you have one of those matte liquid lipsticks I know I have tons of those sitting in a drawer that I never use and they make phenomenal liquid blushes usually you just need one or two dots blend it with either your fingers or a brush or even a beauty blender and you're good to go another issue that I sometimes have with lipsticks is that they can be too dark for me so sometimes I'll see a color online I think it looks perfect then I get it home and it just looks way darker than I'm comfortable with wearing so what I like to do with those and I'll just use this one as an example this is the Sigma infinity point lipstick in temptation so this one isn't a super dark lipstick but 
when I swatched it out, I was like, this is kind of a little bit deeper than I normally wear. So I'm actually wearing this lipstick in the video today and it doesn't look quite this dark on my lips. So what I like to do is I'll put it on my hand like this. Then I'll take a little dab of lip balm. This is the Tarte Sugar Rush Best Bud Lip Balm. And I'll just kind of mix it right into that swatch and it already starts to lighten it up a little bit. And then rather than swipe it on with the tube, what I do is I just take what's on my finger and just press it into my lips like this. The color is already sheared out by adding it to the lip balm, but by pressing it in like this, just dabbing it on, you're just adding a really light layer. So if you don't like wearing a darker lip, that's an easy way just to sheer it out a little bit and make it more wearable for you. And then if a lipstick is too light, this has happened to me so many times. I see a lipstick on a model, it's a nude color and it looks beautiful. Then I get it home and I'm like, this looks like I just put concealer on my lips, it's way, way too light. So what I usually like to do with those is just mix it with a darker color. Lipstick is really fun that way because you can just mix them all together and create a really custom shade if you want to. I often just use the back of my hand as a mixer, just add a little bit here, then take another one, add a little bit there. But you can also just even take a little slice off the top of the lipstick and put it in another container and then mix it together and just do it that way. Lipstick is just really easy to mix. So it might seem kind of like an obvious thing, but I can't tell you how many times in the past that I bought a too light lipstick and it just sat in a drawer and I just didn't even think to do anything with it. So you can definitely use a lighter color to mix into even a darker color and lighten that up as well. When it comes to mascaras, there are some that I really love the way my lashes look. Lash Princess is one of them. Roller Lash from Benefit is another one, but unfortunately they smudge and leave all this black stuff underneath my eyes during the day. So what I like to do with those is seal them in with a mascara that you know does not smudge, whether that is a waterproof formula, a tubing formula, any really long lasting mascara that you already have in your collection. When you're finished applying the mascara that smudges, take the one that doesn't and then put that on top of it. Just add one more coat and that will seal it in and keep it lasting all day long. They do sell waterproof top coats for mascara as well. I know that Huda Beauty has one, but that's an added expense. I mean, you could definitely buy that product as well, but if you have some already sitting around home that are really long lasting, you can just use those to seal in a smudgy mascara. And then when it comes to eyeshadows, sometimes you get a palette home and you're disappointed that the shimmer shades don't have as much pop as you were hoping for. They don't show up as well on your eyes. So what I like to do with that, there's actually a couple things. The first thing I like to do is to put down a white base first. A white base really helps colors to come alive and it helps them pop because instead of putting the color on your skin tone, you're actually putting it on top of white. So the color is going to look really true to what it actually looks like in the pan. This white base is the Moira Priming Cream Shadow. It's just an awesome thing to have in your collection and it'll really help to take an eyeshadow to the next level and really give you the look that it has in the pan. Also, if you have some shimmer shades that are more lackluster and maybe just don't pop as much as you'd like them to, the best way to make them a little bit more vibrant is to foil them with a setting spray. So you can pick up some shadow on a brush and then take whatever your favorite setting spray is and just spritz it a little bit, not too much. You don't wanna saturate it, but just get it barely wet. And then when you apply the shadow, it's going to have that really beautiful metallic foiled effect. I do this all the time. And a bonus is that the setting spray actually helps with fallout and it keeps the eyeshadow lasting on your lid much longer throughout the day. And also if you get an eyeshadow palette home and there's too much fallout and you have glitter going everywhere on your face, I can't recommend this product enough. This is the NYX Glitter Primer. I know people have been talking about this for a long time. I just happened to discover it and I don't know what took me so long. I used to just use regular eyeshadow primer. This is a game changer. It helps to grip your eyeshadow so well. It's a super Super sticky base so I would not put this down when you're applying your matte shades because they're not gonna blend on top of it what I like to do is I put my matte shades in my crease first and I get my crease colors down and when I'm ready to apply shadow to my lid that's when I go in with this and even if I'm applying it on top of the crease shade a little bit that's fine but you just take a little tiny drop of this press it onto your lid with your finger and then anything you put on top of it is going to just stick like glue today I'm actually wearing a glitter shade 
shade from the Aurora Struck palette from ColourPop. I'm wearing this glitter shade right here and the glitter glue not only helps it to stick better, but also makes it pop. So you really don't even need to use the setting spray trick if you have this glitter primer, because I think it just takes eyeshadows to the next level and really makes them super intense. So anyway, guys, those are just some tips and tricks to help you get the most out of makeup that might not really be working for you as it is. I hope that this was helpful. And if you have any helpful tips on how to get the most out of your makeup that I didn't mention here, be sure to let us all know down in the comments. It'll really help everybody out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it so, so much. And if you're new here, I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button before you go. And I'm gonna put some new videos that I have right here, just in case you have some time and you'd like to check them out. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you all in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye.